Hitman Freelancer is a new free mode that's been added to the Hitman World of Assassination. I got about 5 hours playtime, so here are my first impressions. Before we get into the video, just want to say thank you to IO Interactive and Keymailer for giving me a review copy. There will be a link in the description where you can purchase this. So, if you've never heard of Hitman World of Assassination, it's because they've repackaged the Hitman games. So, instead of the Hitman trilogy, they've combined those three games into one and called it Hitman World of Assassination, and the Freelancer mode is an addition to this. So, now you're up to speed. Uh, the Freelancer mode takes place after the events of the trilogy. You no longer work with an agency, you are a, well, a freelancer, and you are free to choose your contracts and go after targets as you please. But there's the twist, it's a roguelike. When you select a contract, you don't know who your target is, where you're gonna spawn, and what weapons you're gonna use. They pretty much hit the randomizer button every time you spawn into a location, and you have to adapt, find weapons, and take out your target. Let me just say, this is not a mode for new players or even experienced players. They crank the difficulty up to 100 because there's also the escape from Tarkov element where you can take weapons uh, you found on missions back to your save house, but if you die, you lose everything. Everything that you saved up for and worked for, uh, if you go into that mission with it, you die, gone. Um, the new safe house that I absolutely love, by the way, is a livable area. You can walk around and you can choose guns uh, off the wall and prepare before you go into missions. You can check the intel wall, see what your challenges are, uh, so you know what weapons to bring on your mission to take out your target with. There's also a new currency system and you use your money to buy weapons from sellers that you have to find during the mission. Uh, seeing as you start with nothing, this is why you want to attempt the challenges so you can build up your funds to be able to afford better weapons so you can complete challenges, you know, it, it has a nice cycle. I love all these new mechanics, I think they're a fantastic addition to the game, however, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining how hard this mode is. I said they cranked the difficulty up, but I've been struggling. Uh, I've made little to no progress in like 5 hours. I completed uh, only like 2 contracts so far. So how it works is you have to complete 2 contracts that will then unlock the showdown mission. Uh, this mission will have 4 targets that all fit the description you were given and you have to figure out which one is the real target. If you mess up one of the missions, it will make the following mission harder because that target is now alerted. You'll be seeing um, all of these alerts at the bottom left that they're decoys, they're other assassins, like it, it is crazy. If you fail those contracts, the entire campaign fails and you have to start over. So that's pretty much what this mode is. You just have to take down syndicates by taking down smaller targets and working your way up to uh, the final showdown mission. I've never covered Hitman on my channel, but I've played all of the games. I love the new Hitman franchise. I spent an entire year playing Hitman 1, just doing challenges and beating times. So the contracts that take place on Hitman 1's maps, I knew those maps like the back of my hand so I could complete those contracts, but it's really, really challenging. Um, so this mode is like a real test of how well you know the Hitman games and how well you can adapt on the fly because the margin for error is almost non-existent. Uh, I can see three types of people liking this mode. It's obviously the Hitman fans because this is just more Hitman. Um, people that like roguelike games and the people who also like very very challenging games. I'm not gonna do that thing where I'm bad at a game, so I'll say the game is bad. No, I think this is a great mode uh, with amazing mechanics uh, that already adds to the insane amount of content that Hitman has, but I think I'm leaning more towards it just may not be for me, because I'm someone who makes a lot of mistakes and messes up a lot. In this mode, you can't you know, use your, faith, uh, your save files to go back if you made a mistake. If you made a mistake, you better figure it out on the fly. Um, I've played roguelikes before and I've progressed in some of them, but this difficulty spike is killing me right now. Um, as difficult as the game is there, they do two things that kind of like cushions the blow when you fail that I like. Um, so when you die, you lose like, I think half your credits by the way. So you, you lose a lot of money when you fail. Um, but when you die and you respawn back in the safe house, there's like uh, some money on the table that you can take up that kind of like adds back to your funds, which I like. Um, and the second thing is every time you come back to the safe house, they give you uh, a crate and you can choose one of three weapons. 
uh to you know either add to your wall or take on to your next mission that i like so there's you know every time you come back to safe house whether you pass a mission or fail you will get uh, a free weapon which i like uh it's nothing crazy it's normally like the um you know just kind of tools to help you out so it'll probably be like a crowbar or you know those explosive ducks or something but it'll never be like you know a sniper or something um and you can't kind of just go into this being like okay yeah i'll just strangle the target and leave because the mission payouts are really low the way that you make a lot of money is to you know to, to do the challenges so it's not even like uh you know kind of an incentive to do the challenges you kind of have to uh if if you want to make up uh, a lot of money and also they've started adding um there there are these npcs on the map that also have credits so you take them out and you can, that's another way to get credits uh, along with doing challenges so as difficult as a game is they they do give you one or two ways to make back some money and um get back some weapons which which i do like um i was gonna throw in the towel and say that this is good but it's not for me when i wrote this yesterday but as i'm recording this right now um I'm playing through Elden Ring at the moment and I struggle and I struggle until I succeed. So I think I'm going to take that mindset uh, into this game because I'm not going to lie. I, I went to bed pretty frustrated because uh, of this game yesterday and it's been on my mind all day. But the fact that I'm willing to go back after being so frustrated, I think that's a good thing. Uh, you know, instead of me being frustrated and just wanting to quit, I actually want to go back and master it. Um, so I, I look at that as a good thing. So those are my first impressions so far. Uh, I'll give it some more time to see if my opinion changes. Um, but yeah, for right now I'm leaning uh, towards it just may not be for me. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll give it some more time to see if my opinion changes and I will do a full review later this month. So if you think that this is something that'll interest you, there's a link in the description. Click my link and you can purchase Hitman World Assassination. Uh, I definitely think it's worth it. The replayability and amount of content is insane and this mode just adds to it. I know some people out there be like, oh, are you shilling because you got a review code? No, uh, I only shill for games I actually like. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I definitely think the Hitman franchise uh, is amazing. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this first impressions video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.